don't applaud, it throws me off. I'm Ron Wilner. I'm somehow a programmer here at the Toronto International Film Festival. And it is my absolute pleasure. Uh, this is the first one of these I've done. And it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the world premiere screening of The Menu. I would like to thank our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa for their continued support. Thank you to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award, and I think you'll understand why. Vote for the favorite, your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. And we would like to thank Searchlight Pictures for graciously providing us with this film. Let them hear it! Searchlight Pictures does great work. I was a critic for 34 years. I love them. I'm so happy to be here. The Menu is the latest feature from Mark Mylod, a filmmaker you may know from his features, Ali G in the House, The Big White, and honestly, the criminally underrated Anna Faris, Chris Evans comedy, What's Your Number? He's also direct... Do we have any What's Your Number fans? You know I mean? <laughs> it was a grower, I told you. He's also directed episodes of television programming you might have heard of, such as Game of Thrones, Shameless, and most recently, Succession. This is so much fun. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Uh, and more recently, Succession for producer Adam McKay, who's also one of the producers of The Menu. This film is, shall we say, a movie of the moment, uh, and that's all I'm going to say about it, because why should I talk when everybody's here? Please welcome director Mark Mylod. Hello. Um, what a lovely moment. Um, thank you. Um, it's fantastic to be here. Um, I've got a couple of things to say. I'll be really quick. Um, I want to thank TIFF for having us and hosting our world premiere. It's a huge honor to be here. Um, I was last here about 15 years ago watching a friend's movie, and I made this little pledge that I'd come back with a movie one day, and it took me a while, but I got here eventually. So, <laughs> um, thank you. Um, and thank you to Searchlight. I'm sorry about my shaky hand. It'll stop in a minute. Um, um, thank you to Searchlight. They've been just uh, for letting us make the film in the first place and for being genuinely just brilliant creative partners from start to finish. That's been lovely. Um, a massive part of the film and the joy of making this film has been the people I get to play with, cast and crew, and there's some lovely members and key members of the crew here tonight. So please stand up and take a bow. Michael Sled, our line producer. Where are you, Michael? So, um, that, uh, and uh, our costume designer, Amy Westcott. Uh, production designer, the amazing Ethan Todman. So, director of photography, Peter Deming. And our amazing art director, Lindsay Moran. So, um, Thank you all, guys. Lovely to see you here. I want to welcome to the stage our truly incredible, amazing producer who, who dug this script out and found it and developed it, uh, Betsy Koch. <laughs> and our amazing writers, Will Tracy and Seth Reese, please come and join me, guys. And last but not least, are delicious because I have to do a bad food pun before the evening's out and beat you all to it. Let's meet some of our cast. We have Arturo Castro. We have Rob Yang. Rob Yang, come and join us. Rob Yang and Mark Sancia and Paul Edelstein. Amy Carrero. Judith Light. I'm the new love of my life, Ray Fiennes. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the movie. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. 
Uh, Hello everyone, my name is Jane Shuttle. I'm the lead programmer for the Special Presentations Program. And it gives me great pleasure to say that we have some time to spend with these incredible people who have made this incredible film. Um, so here's what we'd like to do is if you have a question, if you could put your hand up and wave it a bit back and forth like this, that will help me see you against the light. We're gonna to try to get to as many people as possible. If you could speak as succinctly and as briefly as you can, that would also be helpful because I will uh, repeat it for the benefit of everyone else in the cinema um, so that they can hear. And I think those are the rules, all right. All right, please join me in welcoming and congratulating the director of the menu, Mark Mylod. Thank you, guys. Thank you. My hand's a lot steadier this time around. Thank you. Thanks for not walking out. That was really nice. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to just bring on uh, some of the team again, and then we'll get into the Q&A. Um, I feel quite emotional, sorry. Um, uh, Betsy Cock, our producer. Come on, Betsy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Basketball moves. Um, I, 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 I'm sure you'll agree with me that everything comes from this brilliant script written by my friends Will, Will Tracy and Seth Rees. <laughs> and let's bring our cast back on. Arturo, come and join us. Arturo Castro. And Rob Yang. Where are you, Rob? I think I jumped the order, so you're probably trying to find your way to the stage. Hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Mark St. Cyr. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul Edelstein. Hello, mate. Amy Carello. The incredible Judith Lowe. Ray Fines. And joining us live from Australia, and you Taylor Joy. Oh. Are you there, Anya? Oh. I love you. Hiya. You look great. Yeah, that's to all of you. <laughs> you missed a good movie. I know. I'm, I'm so, so jealous. Everyone looks good. Anya, it's lovely to see you, however, um, however screen-wise. Um, I'm going to pass back to Jane, and she's going to do a Q&A with us, okay? <laughs> all, right, all right, then. Um, any questions right down here in front? Yes, sir. This is for uh, Ralph Fine. Uh -huh. The million-dollar question, do you love being typecast as a villain? Oh, um, I, I, I need to repeat that. Um, the question is for Ray Fines. Do you like being typecast as a villain? I'm not sure that I would consider him typecast as a villain, but if you would like to answer, sir. Um, well, the constant gardener was a villainous role. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I think he's a good guy. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't consider. I don't think Chef Slurk is a villain. I, I, I'm on his side. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Other questions? Yes, here, please. Yes. 
You mean the, the loss of their love for what they do? What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the overall question is a little bit about have you ever loved what you've done but then lost it and learned to love it again? Which is, I think, what happens to him. Has that happened to anyone here? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to be glib about it, but it's, it's really the, it's what life is about. And everybody feels that at one point or another. And what's really valuable about that is that you question that. And you say, what am I doing? Am I still in the place where I should be doing the thing that I thought I wish should be doing all along? And it doesn't come from the outside. It can't come from the outside. It has to come from the question and the curiosity inside. Thank you. All right. OK. Uh, over here, please. Um, the question is for Mark, and I'm going to assume his writers. Where did you come up with the idea for the movie? <laughs> well, it was all my idea. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, Will Tracy, I'm going to pass to him uh, for, to answer this question. Uh, so many years ago, my wife and I were on our honeymoon in Scandinavia, and we were in Norway. I don't know if anyone's been to Bergen. It's on the west coast of Norway. Yes. And I'm sort of... <laughs> Bergen, shout out. So I, I think that um, I, I'm a sort of somewhat like, not as bad, but the Tyler character in the film and that I'm annoyingly obsessed with food. And so whenever I go to a new city, I try to search out what's the place in town to go to. And everyone said in Bergen, well, the place you go to is you make a reservation and then you wait on a dock and this boat picks you up and takes you out 25 minutes to a private island. There's nothing on the island but the restaurant. And so we went, and I'm also a kind of a, a grand champion claustrophobe, so when I got to the island, I kind of had the moment that Margot has where she sees the boat pull away, and I realized I was going to be on this island for four hours, and I, I don't know these people, and anything could happen, and so I was starting to feel a bit anxious, and my wife was sort of trying to calm me down a bit. Um, and I did say to her there at, at the table that, that this would be a good idea for something, um, pe people stuck in a restaurant who, who, can't, who can't leave. And Seth and I had um, kind of been writing together on and off for years. We worked together at The Onion um, many years ago. And um, so um, at some point we had a long dinner where I kind of mentioned that idea. And it was just really just that small German of idea. And then we kind of talked about, well, what if you structure a whole movie based on uh, on a menu. It kind of gives you a built-in structure for a film, right? The, from the muse all the way to the dessert, and, and you pace it the way these tasting menus try to pace th their menus with a sense of surprise and, and storytelling and, and tension. Um, and yeah, so that, that was sort of the genesis of it. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. How was dinner in Bergen? I'm sorry? How was dinner in Bergen? It actually was not very good. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And, and, not, and not just because, and I haven't said the name of the restaurant, so it was called Cornelius, but it was a place that was not, um, it really did feel as if you were being held captive somewhat to, to the whims of, of um, not even so much the chef, but the owner of the restaurant who kind of, I think, bought the place and liked to come in and, and do a sort of uh, Bogart and Casablanca, and here's my place, and you had to sort of put up with his spiel before you ate very small portions of uh, lukewarm scallop. So yeah, it, it, it had its moments atmospherically, but I don't think it was great. But look what so, came out of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Spectacular film. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, more questions. Was there one? Ups I'm looking for the light over here. Oh, yes, there in the red, please. Oh, OK. Um, I'll try to uh, briefly uh, recap that question. It's for Anya and for Rafe. Um, the question is, is because you each represent a particular spectrum or a point on the spectrum about food, how did this film possibly change your own relationship to food? Uh, maybe to Anya first. 
Interesting. I'm so sorry. I feel vaguely creepy only because I'm leaning over. Here, so bear, bear with me. Um, how has it changed my relationship to food? Um, honestly, it introduced me to a whole bunch of food documentaries that I had not. I don't think I would have gone there if I hadn't been part of this film, and it has increased my respect for it in terms of I am a terrible cook. And seeing the way that people use it as a form of art was something that I was not privy to prior to this film. Mr. Um, Ray? I'm really interested in food. I love food. I don't think the f working on the film has changed my love of food. I, I'm not sure that I really would like the kind of food I, that I make in the film in real life. <laughs> I think it's a, but I, I'm interested in the psychology of trying to perfect something and getting lost, that you've lost, I think the thing with Slow, he's lost touch with the thing that moved him to cook in the first place. And Anya's character, um, is sort of in the end, finally, she, I mean, that's the last few scenes, is her sort of reminding him, pushing him, by, by provoking him, by standing up to him, she pushes him to reconnect. And so, um, and I love uh, uncomplicated, fresh ingredients that are not too messed around with, and uh, the stuff, the stuff in the movie. I, I don't think I would want to pay for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you and Will should go for dinner. Yeah, <laughs> um, at the back there. Uh, yes. I love that question. Uh, this is a director. Uh, this is a question for Mark. What are your uh, inspirations as a director? Um, very specifically, um, Robert Allman in this case, um, and very specifically Gosford Park. Um, the, I'll, I'll try to be brief on this because I know time's short. But Will and I first worked together on an episode of Succession called Turnhaven. It was basically one big dinner kind of painful dinner party and I was trying to work out how to shoot it that that felt fresh and so I rewatched Gosford Park um, and I knew how Gosford Park had been shot because a brilliant British actor called Charles Dance who amazingly because I was just telling the story earlier today is here tonight Charles are you still here Charles had told me how, how Bob Altman works with actors and, 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 and this sense that um, instead of being like a wide shot, a medium and a close up, you're just on all the time uh, and the camera will find you. So, and so me and the actors worked like that. It was my kind of homage to Altman really. So I could give you a big long list, but that, that's the number one for me. Okay, that's good. Um, next to the previous person, I know I missed you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so the question was about everyone, anyone who'd like to pitch in, favorite meal? I'm a steak and mashed potatoes guy. <laughs> so there's a cool old steak place in Toronto. B B Barbarians? That, that place. I like that place. Yeah. All right. Anyone else would like to? Fish and chips. <laughs> there you go. All right, we have time for one more question on the aisle there, please. Yes. Okay. Um, going back to food, I was kind of wondering where, where, where the ideas for the several dishes came from. Uh, how did you come up with, with, with those different dishes? And um, is there any way any of that cheeseburger was left over? <laughs> that was the best looking cheeseburger in the universe. Um, so I guess this will be to our writers then, where, how did you, <laughs> yes, <laughs> all right. Um, how did you make up that very particular menu that was included there? Uh, I'm, no, I'm trying to remember even, but yeah, I, I think that we, we did kind of almost work backwards from what kind of, uh, how did we want to escalate the yeah. story at that moment? Um, and then I, I think, we both did a fair amount of research into... into well, I, actually, I did very little research. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not a f big foodie like Will is, so whatever would happen, whenever you'd have to say the dish, and I would write in a dish, Googled from some website that probably wasn't very good, I knew that when I would send it back to Will, he would then make it sound like it should be in the movie <laughs> in terms of food stuff. Right. So, yeah. 
We were, the, we were then really lucky to be joined by um, Dominique Crenn, uh, who's the first woman chef in, in America to get three Michelin stars. Uh, she, she came on board and, and basically translated Will and, uh, and Seth's menu into, into food that we you know, could actually present and, uh, and eat and, uh, and brought in her kind of signature touches to that. And, uh, and then we worked with this whole brilliant food team led by Kendall and, and with, um, with Ethan Todman's team, our production designer's team. So, there was, um, so obviously everything comes from the script, but then with Dominique just ascended it and, and having that kind of stamp of a, this genius chefs on, on, on the food just elevated to a whole different level. We brought in uh, David, uh, David Gelb, um, uh, the creator of Chef's Table, who came aboard as a kind of friend of the production and helped us with uh, some of the design and presentation of the food also. So um, we, we were pretty kind of uh, determined to get that as authentic as we could. Well, it all came together in the most remarkable film, the most fun film, the most enjoyable film. Thank you all so much for being with you. Thank you, Andy Taylor Thank you, Andy. from Sydney. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much.